Hey guys, I am the Comics Kid 2099 and I am here for an installment of I Stand Alone. If you haven't seen one of these videos from me, what I do is I find a single issue in my collection and I determine does this comic book stand on its own? Does it provide all of the information necessary to really understand what's going on in the story? Or do you need the previous issues to really get what's going on? And as I've said in the past, I like to go in an order DC, Marvel, Indie, DC, Marvel, Indie. So the last thing I did was a comic book from Marvel Comics. So this time I will be doing something that is slightly more Indie. And I say slightly because this one is a little bit sketchy. This is from a Wildstorm comic when Wildstorm was already owned by DC Comics. At least I'm 99% certain that this came out while Wildstorm was under DC. I don't know a whole lot about Wildstorm. I have a decent number of books from the company, but as a whole, I'm not super familiar with all of the characters. I've got a couple of trades, but for the most part, I'm still very much a rookie when it comes to Wildstorm to the point where I don't know when exactly DC purchased the company and owned the company, started owning it. But this is an issue of Wildcats, issue three, and I don't know which volume this is. I know that Wildcats has had like five volumes in the entire 20 years that it's been around. Wow, I feel really old because like when I first started reading comics, it was like 2001. So I would have said that Wildcats have been around for 10 years. Now it's been 20 years. That's kind of crazy. Just a little side story. So the plot that happens here. Basically, you've got a smallish team of Wildcats. Uh, Grifter, Spartan, this guy named Noir, and then uh, Lord Imp. Now, Lord Imp is a pseudo-alien midget guy. He kind of looks like an alien, but he actually just looks like a really wrinkled bird man. It's kind of disgusting. And I believe, if I'm not mistaken, he was the founder or the original not field leader of the Wildcats from before. Like when Jim Lee was drawing the book, I believe he was the human leader who was also like two feet tall. I don't remember his name from that point, but I think at that point he was actually supposed to be a human or he was telling people that he was a human and they didn't know that he was actually from an alien race called the Carabum. And, uh, the Carabum, for anyone who is not sure, they were a race of good aliens at war with a race of bad aliens. The bad aliens were called the Daemonites. And all of that is delivered in this issue. You find out all of that in this issue, which is good. I had known all of that before, because I had read some Wildcats before this. I knew all of that, but it was really good for the purposes of this video that it is given to you in this issue. If this is your first issue of Wildcats, and for me, it's been over a year since I read any Wildcats, so it was good uh, to remind me what was going on. Uh, this is a good start to that. Basically, this issue, it does stand alone. I'm going to go ahead and say that, make that statement right now. The team that we have here, they are infiltrating a private school for young, intelligent girls. I guess this whole school is for genius girls. And Lord Imp, the wrinkly alien dude, he is disguised as a genius girl. And then Spartan is... I don't really know a lot about Spartan because in the original Jim Lee run, I'm pretty sure he was like the Captain America type of the group. He was, you know, the strong-jawed, sexy hero. But then later on, I think we find out that either that guy was a cyborg or he died and then a cyborg was uploaded with his thoughts. So they, over the years, they killed Spartan a couple of times, I think. And then this version of Spartan, you don't see him here, that's Grifter on the cover, but the Spartan in this issue is a cyborg that can apparently shapeshift to some degree because Spartan is posing as uh, the little girl's mom and he looks like a woman, so I'm pretty sure he has shape-shifting powers. And they get into the school, they find out that the president of the school, or the principal of the school, rather, and the secretary woman, they have been working with this guy called the Kenyan. And the Kenyan is basically a normal human, as far as I can tell, who, during the Caribbean Daemonite War, he was pitting both races against each other and also pitting them against the people of Earth so that he could be in charge of the Earth and not have to worry about either species. 
that's about all we know. These guys, they uh, infiltrate the school and then uh, they stop the president from activating a device called the Cyclotron, not a normal Cyclotron, but it's spelled P-S-I-Clotron. So it's kind of a cutesy play on words, if you will. Uh, the Cyclotron is basically fueled by geniuses, uh, their, their minds. Beyond that, I don't really know what it does. I, it might have been explained in this issue, but if it was, I don't remember. And um, that's basically it. Not a very plot-heavy issue, but it does do a good job of keeping itself contained. This isn't something which, you know, this was like early 2000s. I remember seeing these advertisements when I first started reading comics and the years two after I started reading comics. So this is within the last 10 years or so, 13-ish years. Uh, during that time period, around the early 2000s, it was not uncommon to see a six-part storyline or something in a book. And sometimes you would get shorter story arcs. Very rarely would you get something longer, but... Uh, it's not uncommon where you would see an issue from that time period and it doesn't feel like a complete story. It feels like one-sixth of a story. And I've talked about various comics like that in the past in this series of videos. Fortunately, this issue does not do that. It feels like a complete story. They go, they infiltrate a school, and then they get out as the school explodes. Uh, fortunately, all these cute little girls here that are trying to get with Grifter, they all get out alive. So, yay, no casualties other than bad guys. But still, it's not a very plot-heavy book. It does leave a few elements open, like the Kenyan. We don't really know anything about him. Presumably, this whole arc is about taking down the Kenyan. He has some sort of alien technology at his disposal, and these guys are going to try and stop him from using it. And that will probably be what happens in future issues. So yeah, as I said, I'm going to go ahead and say that this is an issue that does stand alone. I think it works very well. If you had never heard of the Wildcats, this does a good job of kind of getting you up to speed. I really don't know what happened in the first two issues. I'm kind of curious if anything happened because this feels like it would have been like the first or second issue, but this is issue three. So I'm kind of curious if one of the other issues was kind of padding, but uh, that's not what I'm here to discuss. I'm here to discuss this issue. So yeah, I think that this does do a good job of catching you up to speed. It does stand alone and that's really what's important. And I thought it was a pretty decent issue. Not necessarily something that I would go out and try and seek out more Wildcats from this time because uh, the renumbering and the series being canceled and restarted several times, that kind of confuses me a little bit. I don't know which era of Wildcats came before which era. So uh, I don't know if I would deliberately go out and read more Wildcats, but this was a nice enough issue. I don't feel cheated. So that's about all I have to say here. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to like, share, comment, and subscribe. And I will be back tomorrow with a different kind of video. So until then, I hope you guys have a great rest of the day. Have a good one.